So we're looking um, this morning, or we're continuing our series, looking at some of the practices of Jesus. And so over the last four weeks, we've talked about Sabbath and making space to be with God. We've talked about spending time with God by reading his word. We've talked about the idea of focusing on God through fasting and spending time with God in prayer. And this morning, I want to talk about setting ourselves up to give, not to keep. So in our Bible story this morning, it reminded us that God gave us everything in creation to look after and to care for. We're thinking about the idea of stewardship, which is basically the idea that we're given something to take care of. Now, I wonder, have you ever been given anything to take care of before? Just turn to the person next to you. Have you ever been trusted to take care of something for somebody else? And what was it? So um, I'm sure that you are all really trustworthy people. Um, And so I'm sure that you have been entrusted before to take care of things. Um, I was once entrusted to take care of somebody else's pet. Um, I was very lazy and just let my parents do it. And I got in a lot of trouble um, when I tried to take the gift that was offered to me at the end because I definitely didn't deserve it. Um, This is um, Copper. This is my monkey called Copper that my daughter has now stolen. Um, But he was my year two class toy and I was trusted to take care of him. In year two we um, got the opportunity in our class to take home a class toy for a weekend and so I got to take Copper home. He came um, and he watched Saturday morning TV with me. He then went to a football game with me on Saturday afternoon. He probably met some of my wider family Saturday night and then on Sunday I took him to church Um, I took really good care of him, and I had to write it all down in a little book that I took back to school with me on Monday morning. I'd been given him to take care of and to give back, not to keep. And when we're given something to take care of, even if it's just for a little while, in general, we take the responsibility seriously, caring for it as if it was our own. But ultimately, for the most part, unless it's something we're given on permanent loan, We have to return the thing that we're looking after. So this isn't my actual year two class toy because that would have been stealing. This is a toy that my parents bought me that is a replica of my class toy. And I was bought it in the Christmas of my year two. So I don't know, I'm seven or eight years old. And um, I loved my class toy so much that my parents thought this would be a fantastic Christmas present. And it was. I took him everywhere. And um, occasionally, I was asked to share him with my three-year-old sister or when friends came round. And the answer was absolutely not. There was no way I was sharing this toy because he was mine. And nobody else would get to play with him. I have even been known to hide some of my toys before friends were coming round so that I didn't have to share them. I was definitely a child that wasn't that great at sharing. You see... When I had to give my class toy to the next child in my class, it was really sad to have to return him. Oh dear, he's falling off. Really sad to have to return him, but I knew it was never the plan for me to keep him. He was a gift for the weekend. And knowing that, knowing that I had to return him, set me up to give him back, not to keep hold of him. Did you know everything we see Everything we have, everything we experience, God has given us. Our Bible story today reminds us that all of creation is a gift from God, given to us to take care of, to steward, because he's generous and he's a God that gives. He even gives us the greatest gift of all, which is his son, Jesus. There's a really famous Bible verse in the Gospel of John, and it's um, chapter 3, verse 16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that to whoever believes in him may not die but have eternal life. You might not feel like it right now, but your life is a gift. The place you find yourself during the week is a gift. 
The friendships you have are a gift. The amount of money you have in the bank is a gift. The possessions you own are a gift. The hobbies you enjoy are a gift from God. The creation you see around you is a gift. The things you're good at are a gift from God. Your time is a gift. The way you see and understand the world is a gift. And these things have been given by God. I want to invite you, there should be on your um, chair a, a picture of a present and a pen. I want to invite you to write or draw something on that present that you want to start seeing as a gift from God. Sometimes seeing things as a gift from God is a bit tricky. And so I want to invite you to write or draw something on that piece of paper that you want to start seeing as a gift from God. Maybe it's a hobby. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's something that I haven't even mentioned so far this morning. What is it you want to start to see as a gift from God? Just write on one side of the bit of paper. We'll use the other side a bit later. You see, it can be a bit difficult to see things sometimes as a gift given by God. We don't see presents wrapped like this around all the stuff that we have. We just go about our day-to-day life. And so sometimes in life, it can be easy to think everything around us is the result of hard work and effort that we've put in. Or we can sometimes think that we deserve to have certain things. Or maybe even we have a right to keep certain things. And as a result, we can start to tighten our grip because we intend on keeping them. Just like I did with this toy, we can end up setting ourselves up to keep and not to give. So sometimes in life, our possessions can be difficult to let go of. They can end up draining our time our brain space. Sometimes there's something that we really, really want and we become driven and determined to have it even if it might not be the wisest way to invest our money and our time. And then sometimes once we have those things, we realise it didn't satisfy what we thought it did. Sometimes there are things that we need in life to keep us going And we forget what a privilege it is to have a choice and options available to us that others might not. Sometimes we put in a lot of effort into our relationships and we think sometimes that we have a right to get back the same effort that we have put in. But life isn't always like that. Sometimes we can think that we've worked really, really hard, or we've done all the chores on our list of chores to earn our pocket money. And so because we've worked really hard, we deserve whatever we receive for that hard work. And it's ours to keep, ours to hold on to. When we approach life like this, keeping a tight grip on these things, we end up focusing all of our attention and effort on how we get to keep this stuff. We set ourselves up to keep hold of it and not to give it. Sometimes the reality of life is that our time is really, really limited. Our capacity is really, really stretched. Our energy levels are low and it becomes easier to look in on ourselves and keep hold of whatever we can. We end up trying to keep things together in our own strength and we become reliant on all that we can do. We become consumed by the juggle of holding everything together, keeping the plates spinning, the momentum of life going. And then we end up holding on to stuff that actually isn't really satisfying us. And then when someone says about giving and generosity, it becomes the straw that breaks the camel's back because all our attention and focus is on keeping hold of something. But if we choose to view this life as something which has been given by God, we set ourselves up to give and not to keep. 
And in doing so, we reflect more fully this generous and loving God. We reflect more of who he is to the world around us. See, when we take responsibility to steward and to take care of and not to own and to keep, we demonstrate to our family and to our friends, to our friends at school and to our colleagues, something of who God is. If we see that in creation, we're given a gift. In Jesus, we're given the greatest gift, which brings the fullness of life, not just for now, but for eternity. Knowing that we've been given these things releases us to experience freedom from the tight grip of keeping hold of whatever we can. And ultimately, it releases us to give from a place of fullness. Because if we recognize that God has given us everything, it sort of stirs our hearts because it's his heart to be a God who gives. When we set ourselves up to give and not to keep, suddenly the idea of sharing our possessions, living within our means, stewarding relationships well, giving financially, becomes freeing and life-giving. Why? Because we know that it was never intended for us to keep hold of this stuff. It was always God's intention for us to steward well that which he has given because he's given us so much. And so when we give, we're just giving back to God what's already his. So I want to invite you to take that piece of paper again and turn to the other side you haven't written on yet. I want to invite you to write down or draw on that piece of paper when you look at all God has given you, What do you think you could give back to him? So write or draw something on that piece of paper. What is it you think you could offer back to God? Maybe it's something really practical. Maybe it's something for Love Easter. We're collecting Easter eggs at the moment. Maybe it's something for Love Your Neighbor. We have a bin here at the front for um, food and things that will um, support um, families who might need um, some food at this time. Maybe it's some of your finances. Maybe it's something completely different. What is it you want to intentionally give back to God? There's um, a slide that's going to come up in a second. And um, if you want to, you could um, take a picture of it, take a screenshot of it. Um, These are some things for you to consider how you might grow in generosity and stewardship during your week. I just want to um, explain one particular thing. Um, when we do um, our, have our opportunity to give later in our service, um, there will be a bucket that will come around with some Smarties in. And if you're um, in uh, the kids or youth group, um, Cameron was so disappointed then. If there's some left over, you're very welcome to grab some at the end. Um, There's some Smarties, and um, if you scan the QR code, it gives you some ideas of how you might practice generosity. Maybe you might share some of these Smarties with your friend or a family member. Maybe you might use them to make something that you could then um, sell and use that money to bring an offer at church for Love Your Neighbor Cafe. There's um, a whole bunch of ideas. So um, that will happen a bit later in our service. But that's what that refers to. But there's a whole series of things that we can steward well. God has given us everything. This is a gift from him. And so when we think about stewarding well and generosity, we're just reflecting the heart of who God is.